Hello and welcome to another Bedroom Guru. Today we're going to talk about reincarnation and past lives. I've obviously asked the question when I've been up in the Crystal Palace, heaven, whatever you want to call it, but I've also been shown it um, by my guides. Basically, the evidence I got was irrefutable. As you know, I'm an open-minded sceptic, so I needed to prove about past lives and reincarnation so that I could back it up, so that I could then share it to you and leave it to you to think what you think. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is Julianus. Julianus is um, a monk, he's a San Franciscan monk um, who has been with me all my life. I always used to see him looking like a step toe with like this really weird habit on and now and then he put his hood on when he really meant business. Um, he finally decided to let me know um, about how we met um, and why he looks after me. I had a meditation in the back garden, it was a lovely hot day and I was just recovering from an op. And um, I never intended really um, to go into this big deep meditation, I just wanted to do a healing one. Um, however, he turned up um, and said to me, come with me. He put me in a cave, it was freezing cold, I remember feeling freezing, that was really hot because I was sunbathing. Um, and basically it was pitch black. A couple of seconds later, a big rock went um, aside in the cave and he said, follow me. So I walked out and there was all cypress trees. It was really hot, beautiful. Um, and I said, where are we? And he said, Trastevere, Rome. So I went, right. So I said, well, what's the year? And he said, 1452. So I thought, well, right, okay, remember all this because you're so going to Google it because you're such a sceptic. And um, he then said, I'm going to show you how we know each other and how we met and how I became assigned to your soul. So I thought, this is interesting. Um, as we were walking along, though, I won't, I'll never forget that I walked through a, past a layer and when I looked, it was like Tibet. And he said, um, that's not for you yet. You're not ready for that yet, but it will come. Now, this meditation was most probably about 14 years ago. And funnily enough, I had a meditation about a week and a half ago and the Tibet layer opened up, which I've completely forgotten about, but that's for another story. Um, perhaps if I talk about guides or something. Um, so we carried on walking and then he said, this was your home. You were welcome in the house of Mary Magdalena in this year. I thought, what do you mean I am welcome? And then when I looked in the, um, like I looked at my silhouette, I had a habit on, I could see like this foul thing on and I was a nun. And he called me Mary. He said, welcome Mary, walk forward. And we was in this like courtyard and I looked up and there was these like big pillars on this church and it said St. Cecilia's Church. So I thought, right, remember that, remember that. And then we walked through this like doorway. We come into this courtyard where there was this beautiful um, like water fountain. And um, it was just a beautiful, you know, courtyard garden. It was just so lovely. And he said, come with me. And he took me to the left through a doorway. And he took me to this crypt of St. Cecilia. And he said, this is where we first connected when you came to this house of Mary Magdalena. And so I'm like, right, okay. And so we stood there and then he said, and this is who presided over us. And this beautiful man, he looked like a Pope basically. And then he said, Nicholas V. So I thought, oh, perhaps he's a Pope then. And he came and took my hands and kissed my forehead and said, hello, Mary, um, I looked after you during this time. And the, the amount of love, it was almost like an angel energy. But it was just so beautiful the energy around me was so peaceful and calm and serene um, and then he then turned around and said come we must make haste um, Ava Maria is upon us and was looking up to the sky and I thought I don't know what that means so I'm like right okay and so Julianus held my hands again and he said remember this day and know that we were together and then he walked me um back through this left hand bit then into this like main chapel church area and there was like this archway and he said I wrote I write the the prophecies of God on this archway forever to be here um, and I was like okay anyway he, we wandered off all different places around Rome and then eventually I came back round and I'd been out for about two hours something like that 
And I was like, my God, I've got to Google this. I've got to Google it. And to be honest with you, when I when I Google, when I was going to Google it, I thought this is make or break because if this is all made up, and none of it exists. Then you know, what what is it all about? Am I just imagining it? You know, I was I was a bit scared because I thought if this don't exist, this is all a load of crap kind of thing. Anyway, I um Google Saint Cecilia's Church and oh my God. It just came up, St. Cecilia's Church, and then I stopped and I just didn't want to Google anything more because the front of the church was exactly how I'd seen it in the meditation from this previous life I had with Juliana's. And I was like, I can't do this, I don't want to look at it. Anyway, for some reason it just didn't, didn't feel right. I was too scared to look into it. Don't ask me why, I just don't know. <clears throat> and then it got the better of me. And I thought, sod this, if I need to tell people that I've, you know, there is reincarnation there is past life there are soul clusters that come down to the earth plane i need to like you know get this proof so i did i got a ticket to rome <laughs> most people would go for the designer clothes and the trevi fountain and everything but i thought I, I need to go back i need to see what happens i need to feel if i recognize anything you know <clears throat> so i get to the hotel and have a lunch and everything. Oh, isn't it lovely? Oh my God, Italy, the food. You'd just, you'd just be a 20 stoner within a week, wouldn't you? Oh my God, it was so lovely. Anyway, so I got a taxi out the front of the hotel and I, and I just said, St. Cecilia's Church, Trastevere. And he went like, you know, see or whatever. And um, he drove and I thought, oh my God, where's he taking me? Right, and my heart was in my mouth. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, oh my God, I was so excited. Anyway, after a while, he stopped and I was in the courtyard that I remember standing in, right? And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is just ridiculous. So I was trembling. I gave him the money and got out and I was standing in front of St. Cecilia's Church, St. Cecilia's Square, right? And I walked in and basically, straight away, it was saying about the home of the San Franciscan monks, which is exactly what Juliana said he was. And I thought, shit. So I walk in through the, the main doorway and there's the courtyard with the fountain. Obviously it's not working because it's so old, but I just start crying. I was just crying my eyes out, thinking, my God, I know this. I've been here, he showed me this. And then <clears throat> I saw the um, archway to the left that goes through to the crypts and like that this archway where he wrote his prophecy, right? And it was locked. So I thought, right, well, I'll go straight forward. And when I go through, my God, his name is written in all the lists of, um, like, the monks that were there. And a bust is there that looks like him. And I just started crying. And this bloke came up and said, you all right? I was like, a total mess. Because I just knew it and saw it. Oh, I couldn't believe it. So anyway, I came out of there and I tried to get through to this archway, which I knew was where I stood with Pope Nicholas V and him, right? And... The, it was locked and this and I said to this nun can you open and she's going no 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 and I'm like no can you open it and I was getting really really rude with her and in the end she got really upset because I said I want to get through there I want to get through there and then this bloke come up and said oh leave her alone and I felt so guilty because I'd upset this bloody nun so I was like saying I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I just I just need to go through they wouldn't let me go through but anyway I'd had my proof there of Julianus which was shocking because the church existed San Francisco monks existed and then I sat outside um, in the courtyard and Googled um, San Francisco monks. And they basically do um, like a sabbatical, whatever you call it, where they sit in a cave for, I think, I can't remember if it's six days or something, to um, do self-reflection to make sure that they did then, to make sure that they were committed to God and to, obviously, their path. So that was the cave um that juliana said me put in straight away that's part of what the san francisco monks did couldn't believe it and all their pictures and the habits were exactly the same exactly the same it just made my skin just tingle and i thought right next stop i need to find pope nicholas v so i get another taxi go to the vatican <laughs> So I walked through the Vatican and you might have seen, if you look at my website or Twitter, Pinterest or all the other social media sites I'm on, there's a picture of me with like two orbs above my head in the Vatican. Um, I've also got another one somewhere um, about the Diocese of Trastevere in 1452 and there's an orb right on it. 
um, on Pope Nicholas V. And I'm like, oh, my God. And it's up just as you walk in on this, like, big thing. It shows you all the popes that presided. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to find him because his name was written up. I was like a bloody woman possessed. So I ran... And if you've ever been to the Vatican, there are thousands upon thousands of people there at any given time. It is just colossal. It is the most breathtaking place to go. So I found this guide and I said to him, excuse me, I said, where's Pope Nicholas V's crypt? He goes, oh, it's not here, madam. I went, yes, it is. And he went, no, it's not. I said, it is. I know it's here. I said, it's over there, down those steps. And he went, have you been here before? I went, no, but I know where to go. And I said, his crypt is down there. And he went, no, madam. And he looked through his books like in the guides and all the rest of it. He goes, no, it's not listed here. I said, it is. And again, I'm going to like upset him next. Really upset a bloody nun. So I just went, oh, don't worry about it. right? And he watched me walk over to this little doorway, which I had no clue where I was going, but I did, if that makes sense. Walked down these steps, and basically it's where all the crypts are, of all the popes, right? And I didn't think, oh, my God, isn't this amazing? I just knew where I needed to go. I think it was the second or third crypt on the right. I went straight over to it and I bowed over it, crying my eyes out like it was like a family member. I, was, I felt so embarrassed. And these nuns come up and they were saying, are you OK? And I'm going, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. They said, oh, come and sit down, come and sit down. And they got this chair and I was sitting there like a wreck. And when I looked, Pope Nicholas V. You're not supposed to take photos there, but I did get a photo for the proof. And I'll put it up. I'll find it and put it up right. But I can't put it up on it. I'll have to put it up on um, my Facebook page um, and Twitter and that. Anyway, so I look up and it's Pope Nicholas V, right? And I'm like, holy shit, it's his crypt. So I calm myself down, thank these nuns. And they're like, oh, okay. And then I got up, went up there. And it shows that he was um, presided over the diocese of the... Um, Cecilia's church in Trastevere in 40, over, like, during the period of 1452 I couldn't believe it right so after I got myself like normal went back up the stairs and this guy just spotted me right and I say there's thousands of people there and he said come here madam come here because you're a very special lady so I went sorry and he goes there is nothing in the guidebooks I don't know why about um, Pope Nicholas V he said, but I went to speak to one of the guys that's been here a very, very long time. And he said, yes, there is a crypt. I'm really sorry. He goes, come with me. Right. So I followed him. And he took me around these back corridors. And there was like these armed men and everything. And um, he said, go and, go and buy um, three vials in the, um, what was it, two vials? It was two vials. And um, from the gift shop. So I'm like, okay, guys, just trust me. So go in the gift shop, buy these two vials. And... The woman gives me change back. She goes, oh, she goes, you've got a gold coin, which is the Pope's collection for the money. I don't think you should have that. And then she looked at me, she goes, oh, have it anyway. And I thought, wow, this is like really magical. So I took these files, went back to the bloke, and then he called one of these blokes over with an earpiece thing in his ear, like a twirly wire thing. And he's went blah, blah, blah in Italian. And this bloke's looked at me, taken the files and wandered off. I'm like, what the hell's going on, Right. And then, I hope I'm not going to get people into trouble for this. Anyway, he comes back and says blah, 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 blah to me and smiling and gives me two foals full of water. Right, and the bloke says, this is holy water from the Pope's private font. Now, I don't know if he was giving me a bit of, you know, bullshit. <laughs> That's where he got it from, the bloody toilet tap or something. But he went, take these. This is a gift from you because you're a very special lady. I'm like, oh my God, I just couldn't believe it. I've still got them. What's in there? Have I got one in here? Oh, I don't know where I've got them because I'm, because I'm packing everything up. Hang on a minute. I'm going to back this theory up. Come with me. You might, most of you are going to see the mess of my house because I'm packing at the moment. I'm sure. Hang on a minute. They're like, get on with it, will ya? It's just a bottle. I just want to prove it to ya. And I don't have to prove it to you, but... Oh, where is it? Hang on a minute. <laughs> get on through my house. <laughs> oh, God. There's so much pain as well. Um, it's in this one. I 
like Annika Rice. Do you remember Annika Rice when she used to look like look for the treasures and stuff? Oh, ow. Where is it? Hang on. Right, one last try. If it's not in here, then I've packed it already because I'm in packing mode for my new house that I cosmically ordered, but that'll be for another video. <laughs> Sorry about this. Hang on a minute. Mind you, at least it's a different background from... Um, this is a different background from my bedroom. See? I'm trying to add a bit of pizzazz into it, a bit of excitement. Oh God, I can't find it. Ah. Oh. Right, there's only one more place it'll be. Bear with me. Welcome to the tour of my house. It is a beautiful 17th century cottage. Oh. Let's see, you've seen a bit of me house now as well. <laughs> Hang on, is it in here? If not, no, I'm not going to be defeated. I'm not going to be defeated. Oh, hang on. Oh. Oh, there's my little bird in the background. I should not be defeated. Where is it? Do you know how much pain I'm going through just to show you this? I hope you're all going to be grateful. <laughs> how can I not know where they are? Because it's the most, one of the most special things I've ever been given. Isn't that terrible? Leave this, I've bloody packed it. I've already packed it, I don't believe it. Right. Oh. One of my promises is is that when I move into my new house and unpack it, I'll show you it. <laughs> Hang on, let's just try here just in case. I can't understand it, right? Oh my God, if it's back in that drawer where I've been sitting quite comfortably, I'm gonna get the right hump. <laughs> so, just to add to that story, that healing water, um, my dog, Mina, had an aggressive tumor and in her throat, and they said basically it was gonna kill her. Um, so I used the holy water, put it on the on the tumour and I used a selenite wand which the end cracked on. Um, which I can show you that because that's next to my bed. I don't know if you can see this but... I don't know if you can see the crack at the end of that. But basically it cracked it. So, yeah, there you go. Um and I knew that I'd healed it. And basically, when I went, took her back to the oncology department um, at Cambridge University, he said to me, we're gonna have to put this down as an anomaly of something we just can't understand because the tumor's totally gone. <clears throat> Look up at me, God, talk about, talk about Emmy awareness. I've just moved a little bit and it's absolutely exhausted me. So anyway, at least I healed my baby girl with the tumour. Sorry about that. It's a bit of a bit of a nothing. Oh hang on a minute. No, I'm gonna give up now because I'm wasting too much energy and I can't remember I put the bloody thing. Oh, I've gone all red. Sorry about that. <laughs> God, this is so unprofessional. I don't care, it's what it Oh, take me as you am, as I am, I mean. I don't know where it's gone. I must have packed it. So anyway, yeah, I healed her tumour and um, she did have another one. I knew she was passing anyway, but it was just good to show um, the oncology department at the university that um, crystal healing works. Anyway, we're talking about reincarnation. So basically, um, everything that Julianus had shown me in that meditation was completely 100% um, true, which completely nailed it for me um, that, that we have previous lives. I also um, 
I remember doing, I did a live Most Haunted Night once, and I was talking to, is it Kieran O'Keefe? can't remember now. Was it Kieran O'Keefe, or was it? Oh, I can't remember. And basically, I said, how do you explain that? Because I wanted a sceptic's, you know, point of view. And he said, oh, um, perhaps you fell asleep in front of a history show. No, I don't think so. Um, so that happened with that. When Khan introduced himself, he basically showed himself as my father in a previous life. And I think it was back in the... Oh, blimey, not rubbish. A few hundred years ago. And basically, it was when... Oh, a couple of hundred years ago, sorry. And it was when um, the white people were taking over the lands. And we were Navajo Indians. I think it's Arizona. And he showed me my life with him. Right, and this is really interesting. Because what happened was, is that I um, was... Where well, the white man come over to our camp to take the land. And I was bound, raped and murdered. Nice. In that lifetime. And um, basically, Khan took me and put me on a pyra and called to Great Buffalo Spirit. Now, I don't, I don't ever read anything. I don't know about anything. And he did all these kind of rituals, showed us where we lived, showed us what implements we, we used, what we wore. And again, when I Googled it, everything was spot on to what sort of implements, you know, what totems. Um, the fact that three mediums had separately told me his name and what um, tribe I was from was backing that up. But also he used to call me Ankala. And one day he said to me, because I, I um, have got really weak wrists and I, I broke one when I was little, um, but I can't lean on anything. I've got problems with my wrists. Obviously it's exacerbated now by the ME, but I can't, I can't lean on them or use them. So I've got really weak wrists. Also, um, my passion, which sounds a bit weird, but I, was, I knew I was capable of it and strong of dealing with it, was that I was a rape liaison officer um, as part of my job as a police officer. And I, when I was a major investigation detective, I, I was the um, family liaison officer for murder victim families. I had a passion for helping people through the worst times of their life, whether it be you know loss of life or rape or sexual offences. And... Um, one day in a meditation he said to me look at your wrist feel your wrists I'm like yeah he goes why do you think on this lifetime you have um, dedicated all of your energy to people that have either been murdered um, or raped and I thought oh my god and he said you chose as part of it as well as being a spirit spiritual ambassador you chose to make up for what happened to you in that lifetime I was like, wow, and it was such an epiphany. I'm like, bloody hell. Okay. Anyway, I remember going to a psychic fair and I was chatting away to this Native American bloke that was there, right? And um, I think it was Olympia. I was headlining there, um, doing live seances and stuff like that in London. And he said, and I said, oh, my name's Ankara. Is that like part of the tribes that be in Arizona? He went, he looked at me and smiled and went, no. I said, what does Ankara mean? He said, it means daughter. And I started crying like a dickhead. Because I'm like, oh my God, he's calling me talk. So, so my dad, Khan, Kanunka, he was also called like Hammerhog, um, was basically my dad. And he was calling me Ankala, but I thought it was my name. And I thought it was my name for years, like a plum. Um, so basically, if you have any... It's not worth me going on and on and on about everything, but there's been so much more that's been proven to me about this. But there's like the staples of, you know, how I know about previous lives and stuff. If you meet um, people that you feel like you've known forever, that's your soulmate. If you feel completely connected to something that seems a bit illogical, like some people are completely obsessed with things from Egypt, you know, and some people are completely drawn to certain areas of the world for for no reason, you just like it. Sometimes you need to look a bit deeper to see if it's a past life that's drawn you there. Have you ever been to a place where you absolutely feel like you've been there before and you know exactly where you're going and exactly what it's like and you feel like a deja vu, but the deja vu goes on for like 10 minutes? It's mostly because you've been there before. You know, if you look at... I've, I've mentioned this before on videos before where there's like all these indigo children where the vow is so much thinner with their understanding of the universe that they remember their past lives as soon as they're born but they carry on insisting about it. I think it's called the ghost in my child. 
And I love it. It's not a ghost in there. It's their previous life they're remembering. I think it's amazing. You know, some people are connected to certain eras, the 50s, the war. I absolutely know I had an incarnation during the Second World War. Um, I know I had an incarnation during the witching position, but I didn't get tried as a witch because that's where I connected with Catherine, who was a healer, deemed as a witch. But she escaped it as well. She got really old, bless her. And she's Celtic. But you know what? I think, I honestly feel that she... When I see her, um, when I met her, she was standing on a cliff, and I'm sure that cliff is Berry Head because I am so obsessed with Devon and Cornwall, and it's not, and I just feel, I don't know, I've just drawn to the place like a magnet. That's why I'm moving back there. And Berry Head in Brixham, I'm sure that's where I first met her many, many moons ago, 10 years ago, where she first introduced herself to me, and she blew some rune stones that turned into white doves, and I thought, my God, I just need to be in that place, and I'm sure that's it. I'm sure that's it because again, not going too deep into it, but I I've got a soulmate that I haven't met yet on this earth plane. I don't know if I will or is coming a different shape or form called Jonathan, and Jonathan basically is a Victorian man. Um, and I used to have dreams where I used to wake up crying my eyes out because I wasn't with him. It was like I'd just broken up with the love of my life. It was just really really weird. And we'd have these dreams where I was like um, just a maid, you know, just a, a chambermaid. And he was a squire of this big giant house. Um, and we had an affair. And I was totally in love with this man. And I had, I had this recurring dream through my teens, through my 20s. It's just gone on and on and on and on and on all my life. I haven't had one for a while and I know why now. Um, Jonathan, oh my God, sideburns, long dark hair, um, like, you know, wavy hair down to here. Um, breaches, it was just stunning and I think it was the um, late 1800s that I was with him and this house and then his wife found out and she was Spanish or something, she weren't English and we used to have to meet um, on a cliff top and I found out subsequently that I was Berry Head which is another long story um, but basically I remember the first time I ever went to Devon, I was interested because my mum and dad had had their anniversary, um, their honeymoon there. And I got asked to do an angels workshop at a place called Lupton House. And when I started going down the drive, my heart started going in my throat. And I had that similar feeling that I had um, when I went to Rome. I thought, what the hell? And then when I saw the house, I thought, oh my good God. And it was the house that I had basically been dreaming of <clears throat> all my adult life. And you can Google it. I've got pictures of him somewhere. And when I looked into the history of the place, Jonathan basically um, presided over that house at the time that I dreamt that we were there together. And we used to kind of meet secretly on the top of this cliff top. And as I followed my mind through the... I used to go out of a back window and I used to go up this bank and go across these fields and then basically I followed the, followed it in my mind, followed it by the car, and I came to Berry Head. And I was like, oh my God. So it all worked out. Totally right. I remember when I was doing a dem there once, I was with my friend Nikki, and I said, this is so surreal, because this is a room I used to go out the window, and I used to have a stone throw there for Jonathan to say, right, I'm throwing a stone, I'll be there like in half hour or whatever. And then as we stood there, she'll, she'll back this up, I'm telling you, a stone just hit really loudly at the window. She went, oh my God. I went, oh my God, I said, I told you. I said, it's just doing an echo of what we used to do, I'm telling you. And she'll back that up. So you better put a comment on it, Nick. Um, so yeah, past lives, have a look into it. Have a look at what you love. Have a look at what you're naturally drawn to. Have a look, you know, what odd collectibles that you have. See if there's anything that draws you to that previous life. There's lots of past life regressionists out there. You can do your own self journey and do it through meditation. See if you can come up with anything. Um, but there's, there's ways and means of, you know, finding out your past lives. I find it really intriguing because a lot of the time we're working out some of the karma that we wanted to sort out from our previous life. So me with the weak wrists and, you know, looking after rape victims, murder victim families, that was just really weird because I had a passion for it when I was in the police. Um, sounds awful, but it did, it, I, it, I did have a passion for it. Um, so yes, 100%, we are, um, reincarnated every three generations 
if we choose to. Um, and we do have past lives, absolutely no doubt whatsoever. And if any skeptic can work out, you know, my visit to Rome, crack on with it because I'm telling you now, I, I don't think anybody can give an explanation of that apart from the fact I had a past life with Julianus in 1452 in Trastevere, Rome, as Mary. And what happened was, when he said about, oh, you're welcome into the house of Mary Magdalena, when I was researching it all, in 1452, nuns were allowed to live in that place with the monks. They were welcomed into, guess what, the house of Mary Magdalena. So um, everything was completely historically correct. And believe me, I'm not a historian. I used to bunk off history lessons at school because um, I didn't like my teacher very much. I didn't bunk off anything. Um, but I just, she was just lousy. So I really, and I've also made a massive effort not to learn of any historical things. So when I've done like um, paranormal investigations and that, where you're doing era blending, you know, you're going back in time. I don't want to be mucked up with my knowledge of history. I'd rather go in and get it told to me and then research it, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so I know that all my beautiful guides that look after me um, are people that have shared a past life with me, which is magnificent. Um, I'm really interested to start um, blending with this Tibetan lady. From She said she was from Cam, and I'm like, never heard of it. When I googled it, Cam is East Tibet, which is full of really spiritual people. And she showed me this um, white circular yurt with black square door. And I'm like, I'm so Googling that when I finish this meditation. And then I went into it. I don't remember anything that happened, but I Googled it. And yeah, that's what they, they, they live in there. That's that's a very common habitat for them. The white circular ones with the black doors. Um, with like the short dome roof, not a normal big yurt. Um, and Cam is East Tibet. So let's find out where I come from and what happens with that being eventual, isn't it? So I hope you've enjoyed this one. <laughs> Sorry about the tour around my house. I really wanted to show you my file from the Pope. I don't know where it is. I'm going to remember as soon as I finish this, but hey-ho. Anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed it. This is my proof of my past lives and um, and the proof of reincarnation. And I hope that you can find a way of enlightening yourself to do the same. Find out where you're from and who you are. So until next time, take care. Bye.